my name is Daz and I have the absolute pleasure and privilege today of introducing David Galbraith to you um, and I will let him introduce himself but today we're going to talk all things wellness uh, and why it's important and how you can prioritize that in your life but I'll hand over to David who I feel like I should be bowing down to because <laughs> he's an absolute legend and I've heard him speak many times and I'm very very grateful for his time today so welcome. Cool thank you. Um, <laughs> I, it's a really weird thing to say, like, who, who are you and, 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 and how do you fit in and all that sort of thing. Because when people ask me who I am, my first go-to in my head is I'm a dad. So I've got an 18-year-old daughter and a 14, almost 15-year-old daughter. And they're both so incredibly different, but so incredibly alike. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a dad. Um, I'm married, so I'm a husband. Um, and then as a profession, I'll probably feel more like I'm a farmer than anything else. <laughs> so in my heart and soul, I've grown up on farm when I was a kid. Mm. Mum and dad never owned land, so I've always been shepherds or managers. And this feels like the land is in, in me or I'm in the land. Yeah. It really feels like that's home. And then professionally, I uh, trained as a clinical psychologist. I applied 15 times to get into the clinical program after you do your masters then you can apply to do the, the last part of the training to become a registered clinic and got told 14 times no that I was too thick so I'd, um, 14 of for some reason that what that means is that there was something in me driving me <laughs> to yeah. get told no 14 times and then the 15th time they're desperate for me in Auckland and I, I got in uh, <laughs> which that wasn't the only reason fantastic. <laughs> And then so, as a psychologist for 20 years, um, the first part of that I was working with the, uh, some of the most high-risk youth offenders in Auckland, and then worked with the police and the child abuse team with SIFs, and then really just when my daughters were born and it started to be a little bit harder to be compassionate mm. to those people. So then I started moving to sport. Nice. And then spent three years of my third Olympics, um, rugby, probably been my main sport though so you know a long time in super rugby and um, you know some, some time in the international space too so rugby and performance uh, sport and performance has really become probably where people know of me mm. rather than the, the historical clinical psychology so I've been very lucky to be um, surrounded and part of immer immersed in some really cool cultures and seen some pretty amazing coaches operate and seen some amazing athletes do what they do. Mm. So I guess what where I've got to now as I come to retire, so I'm not a psychologist anymore, I retired last, uh, two years ago now. Um, you know, they talk about it's on the shoulders of giants we stand and, and nothing that we've learned is ours. And I really feel like that because honestly, I see minus average at university and for psychology, for anyone that's done psychology, understand C minus, you know, for BA is thick. Yeah. So I did really hard to do nothing. <laughs> um, so really what I've got to now is I've just been lucky to absorb in some really wonderful lessons from some pretty amazing people over those years um, and netball as well. Um, so I've got to see some amazing women and some amazing men and, and some amazing youth do some cool things. And I guess that's all then summarized into being a dad and that's taught me more than anything, yeah. being a dad of two daughters. And then I guess I get to this point now where we can yarn today and it's pretty cool that if there's stuff in that that's helpful for others, then that's epic. Yeah. yeah so that would probably be my background. Um, yeah, like I'm moving on to a second half of my life now, which is with an 18 year old who's at first year in Otago. I don't hear from her unless I message her. She's third weekend. Um, <laughs> Toga party somewhere. Yeah, yeah, well she was. So yeah. I messaged her once. She said, Dad, I'm busy on the Toga party. Um, so for me, it's the second phase now, which you know, it's, it's, it's getting really clear on that next life plan because it's, you know, more people touch on this today, but often our insecurities and doubts stop us from planning because as soon as we plan, it puts pressure on us to feel like we have to deliver. And yet ironically, without a plan, we end up wasting time. And I've started this thing recently, which is because of that, I've just called it the, the kick up the ass mentoring. <laughs> but all it is is, is it's 10 minute chat, it's a 10 minute chat. Because if we can get clarity, we only need 10 minutes, what we usually do in an hour. We only need an hour, what we do in a week. Mm. And so the planning for us, my second 
half is, you know, I guess what we're going to talk about today is just how important it is to, to have clarity. Yeah. Otherwise you do nothing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden five years ago and our children, and that's what I found with my daughters is, holy hecka, how did, they get, how did it get to 18? How, how did I get to a point where I'm having to talk to my daughters about sex? <laughs> and it's like, what? It's like, when, when did that yeah. happen? That so, remains one of my nightmares to deal with. Yeah. Um, I've been reading um, The Ride of a Lifetime by Bob Iger. He's the CEO of Disney. Oh, and one of his okay. things he says is, is so many people aren't brave enough to take that swing and they'll find all those excuses to load in as to, I would have done it. Yeah. But, yeah. and then there's all these reasons that sit in totally. behind, but they do it to justify, you know, and, and that can be the smallest thing that you wanted to try. Like, I'm trying pottery in a couple of weeks. Wicked. I'm not very good at doing Wicked. anything that I'm not good yeah. at, that yeah. I'm really, you know, I'm backing myself. Well, it's a nice <laughs> metaphor too, isn't it? Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Just look at that, I'll pretend I planned that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I could have made every excuse. I'm not creative. I've never done it before. Yes. Oh, I'm going to make a hash of it. I'm going to look like a spoon. Everyone yeah. in the room's going to know more than me. Yeah. But I'm backing it and just doing it. So anyway. Yeah. So, but we do that regardless of going for a big job or doing something yeah, small. Totally. Coaching our kids at sport. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, I would. Yes. I've got to work totally. this day. You know. Yeah. So. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You're so right that underneath that, it's the same equation. Same. I'm not sure what the right word is. Algorithm. It's the same algorithm our brain runs out. No matter what the context, yeah. it runs out the same one. If the algorithm is, I'm shit, it will run out, yeah. I'm shit, whether it's CEO, helping out at play centre, whatever it so is. So true. Yeah. Well, that, that's a beautiful segue into, so what would you, in your, your experience, because mm. I think wellness is a really loaded word, mm. but in your, your knowledge and experience or mm. opinion, what is wellness? It's quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I guess where I've got to is, and this is my take on it, mm. people get caught up in the physical realm about wellness. They do. And for me, wellness has been anchored in here in our soul. Because, you know, like for me, you go, okay, what's this? Well, it's the solar plexus. Mm. So S O L A R, plexus. And then you go, why, why what's solar? And then you go, well, the sun's solar. S O L A R, the yeah. solar system around yeah. the around the sun, and then I think, well, okay, well, that, that, that I must have named that because that's life, and yeah. this is life energy. So then it's like, I go, okay, it's the same thing, mm. and then you go, well, what if you change the spelling and call it S O U L A R, yeah. and now you've got the solar plexus, and so when I think, what is well being, um, I I then go straight away as well, it's it's someone that is very quiet in here and they're very anchored in oh, here. Yeah. So I see wellness as not being a physical thing. I see the physical thing as a result of wellness. Yeah. So it's, it's a bright byproduct of it. It's what we can measure and what we can see, you know, our cholesterol, our stress rates, our heart rate, our blood pressure, um, diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. So unhealthy, unhealthy, healthy, well, unwell. Depression, anxiety, same thing. So I mm. put all that as the markers of it. Mm. But actually, what it is for me is it's, it's you know, if I could come up with a descriptive, it's quiet. quiet. I love that. And so we sit. We might be sitting at a party. Are we quiet? Yeah. We might be sitting watching the sun rise with our, with our partner or by ourselves. Are we quiet? Or do we feel the need to Instagram it, hashtag it, living life fully? <laughs> You know, like those sorts of things, it's, yes. and that's not Hashtag quiet. Blessed. Yeah, and that's not quiet. Yeah. That's I'm noisy yeah. unless I've got this connection with yeah. community or society. Then I see I am or who trying to show who I am. Mm. So if I could summarise it down, wellness to me is more of a spiritual realm than a physical realm. Mm. It's a universal place where, at its deepest, we become unconscious. Yeah. And. And then our, our operating from that is instinctive. So it's not like you get to a place of wellness. You are or you aren't soulful. You are or you aren't quiet. Mm. Whatever you are is where everything operates from. So if you're quiet, well then you operate in your parenting from quiet. If you're quiet, you then operate in supporting a friend from quiet. If you're quiet, you then operate from applying for the CEO job yeah. from quiet completely different place from operating from noisy yeah. and so I would go wellness is the ability to sit quietly with ourselves and amongst the universe and become part of the universe 
and then we don't exist anymore. So then if you go, what is wellness? Wellness is you no longer exist. Yeah. <laughs> Deep. You're just like, you are. Yeah. Your being. Yeah. And that can be grief at a funeral. It can be elation at a wedding. It can be celebration at a birth. It can be all those things. Yeah. I love that quiet because when we talk about wellness, people always think physical wellness. Mm. And I so agree mm. with you. But there's mm. the social and emotional and mm. mental and spirit. Like there's so many pieces to wellness. Mm that people, you know, it's like whare tapa wha or mm. any, te, mm. te whiki, for example, or any of those things, it's so much yes. more than anyone, that wairua yeah. is so critical to yeah. it. It's, yeah, so love cool. that, quiet is perfect. So, well, we already dealt with how, why that's so important. So how do you prioritize it? And amongst the noise, I guess, or in amongst the... Yeah, like that's, like, yeah, that is the question, isn't it? About yeah because the quietness is also longevity, the quietness is physical health, the quietness is relationship health, it's quietness is um, listening to your heart, yeah. listening to the gut instinct when you make big decisions. You know, especially think about my daughters and I wanted to get them to a place where they make all of their life decisions from their stomach, not from their brain, because mm. their brain will have them sit down and do fours and against. Yeah. Should I marry him, shouldn't I marry him? Yeah. Uh, he's got good income, his parents own a farm. Um, he's really well known within the rugby community. Yeah. Um, he seems really nice with children. What a bullshit exercise! Yeah. But so the heart true. and the heart's saying, no, yeah. <laughs> don't be crazy. I don't know if we're all in on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, same with business, same with applying for jobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Which one should I apply for? This one tells you this one is the bullshitter. Yeah. And so the the. The quietness in there to get us those things for me is, is not so, so powerful. Mm. Um, and so when we think about how we prioritize it, there's so many layers to it. And I think about my daughters, it's the layers to help them get to a point where they can be quiet and they can access that space to make those big decisions and, and, and live from that space when they live. So uh, and intuitively, and instinctively and creatively. And then for me, it's like, so when we ask, well, how do we get that? It's understanding that, again, that that's a product. Mm. So if people look at, I, I, I need to get well, I need to get my weight sorted, I need to get these things sorted, which are actually the markers of it rather yeah. than it. it. So if they're automatically making goals for weight, for fitness, for well-being, they've already been hijacked. They've already been sucked into what mm. they think it is. When the irony is, you know, you were talking about the world's, world's wealth um, and this is weird for me, like uh, the, what's the, th what do they say about those people that think, uh, something about theorists, chaos theorists, or, <laughs> yes, well, you know what I mean, I'll get, the word will come yeah, up, yeah. The, word, the word will come up in my mind, the, the fact that there's so many layers of stuff that goes on behind how we are, how we are, yeah. and you go, what did you say, 2.5% of all wealth is attributed, 2.2% mm. of all wealth in the world is funded to, funded to women. women. Yeah. Conspiracy theorist, that's what I'm after. So you see how straight away that one stat, you go, well, holy hecka, that is just so, uh, so, so grossly uh, grotesque, right? Yeah. And then you go, oh, okay, so what's, how does wellness tick, check with that? Because that stat is about people influencing power and resources. Mm -hmm. So they want, the current status quo allows them to have 97.8% yeah. of wealth, right? So then you go, why do, why do we get sucked into our weight? Why do we get sucked into how we look? Why do we get sucked into all these things around wellness? And see how, for me, it takes them away from this. Yeah. So being sucked into how we look, what we eat, what our weight is, what our wellness markers are, is just a way to keep us sick, to keep us insecure, to keep us deflated, yeah. and stop us from being confident and anarchy free thinkers. And then that's the opposite to what they will want. Because they don't want free thinkers to look at that and to go, no. No more, because they'll have revolutions off that. So then you go, okay, so we get sucked into that. So I reckon it's really important for people, you know, for women to listening this, if ever they sign up for, for weight loss, for fitness programs, all those sorts of things which are about that, mm -hmm. that's part of that control and oppression. Mm -hmm. And that's sucking them into their insecurities. Now there's no way they can rule the world, their world from that place. So then I go, okay, so there's a really good warning if that's where you are. And then I go, well, how do we do wellness? And so again, I think about my girls and the daughters, is all it was was understand the layers 
to get into that point about how we can then look at yeah. prioritizing time. And over the years, I thought, well, what's the equation? Because Albert Einstein has E equals MC squared. Yeah. I talked about that, I talked about that? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so Albert Einstein has E equals MC squared. And I thought, well, shit, if I'm smart, I need to come up with an equation. <laughs> so I, I thought, well, what would the equation be from 20 years of psychology as I retire to help us understand um, performance and high functioning? Yeah. And what is it that gives that? So then we can go, well, what's the equation that gives us wellness? So yeah. it's the same wellness, yeah. high functioning performance. We can just put it and slot yeah. it in. And the equation is identity times courage equals authenticity. Nice. Identity times courage equals authenticity. Now, the Japanese had a beautiful term that I found when I was looking into samurai and the history of samurai. And they had, um, so samurai is, is governed and bound and formed on a, a philosophy called Bushido, or the way of the warrior. Yeah. And it has seven values like loyalty, um, humility, courage, sacrifice, and beautiful, beautiful values. Yeah. And what they had is that someone who was absolutely purely guided by those core values, and they were deadly, so the elite athlete and very good person, yeah. they, they were labeled Katsumono, K-A-S-U-M-O-N-O. Now it's literal English translation as quintessential weirdo. Oh no. <laughs> How good is that? Right? I, I'm just like that. It's just, it's, we'll, we'll talk about this because it's so powerful. Yeah, it's so you go identity times courage equals quintessential weirdo. And this is where I asked if I could swear. So identity times courage equals fucking weirdo. <laughs> hey. Yeah. And then I go, okay, so we take this a step further. What do I want on my daughter's gravestones when they die at 105, 115? And so let's say it's Grace Chomaringi. Panapa Galbraith, born 2006, died, whatever. Underneath, I don't want good mum, loving sister, yeah. blah, 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 blah. That's the lovely things, but that's just blah, 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 blah. Yeah, know. You know that anyway, and that's just part of that 2.2% um, stuff yeah. again. That's how the women think they should be, right? It, yeah. Why don't they have fucking weirdo? Proud, proudly. Yeah, weirdo. just that. Mm. Now, if you look at that on a gravestone and you're going through with the kids to have a little day out and look at old stories 2,000 years on, you'd go, <laughs> That, that there must have, she must have lived her life. Yeah. <laughs> and so that we can summarize really what we're talking about is that's the equation we need to be thinking about, not our weight, not all of those things that we get bloody caught up on. That's the equation because we go, okay, identity times courage equals weird, which is you being you. you being Whatever you. you are, you be you. And then no one, that makes you weird from everybody else. Yeah. So that, that becomes a really important equation as we talk about wellness because the wellness will take care of itself if we take care of the equation. Mm. And then how do we prioritize time into being quiet and getting quiet and living in that space? Well, who are you? So there's your first one, identity. Yeah. So who are you? So for me, the question to people that I support now is, I don't care what they do, I'm interested in where they're from and who they are. Yeah. And so I'll ask that, who are you? And they'll be like, well, I'm David Galbraith. Yeah. And I'm like, Cool, here we go. Um, and then I'm interested in their names, I'm interested in their surnames, I'm interested in the history to get from where they were to there, and what's the family history right back to as far as they've looked. Now, as soon as we start doing that, we're moving out of here, and we're coming into here. You cannot not come in here as soon as you start to ask, so where does Galbraith and Robertson come from? Oh, okay, it comes from Stirling. Oh, wow, how? No, where, what? Yeah. Where'd they land? How, who thought they, when did they yeah. land? What did they do when they landed? How'd they get from Masterton to Kafia? How did that happen yeah. in, in 1842 or whatever yeah. it was? So there's stories within that space where our, both our genetic genetics and our social genetics come from. Yeah. So in there lies pride. So true. And then that's what we've got to be anchoring in. Identity lived fully is pride. Yeah. And it's the fucker papa that, yes. as you discuss it, someone will go like, "So my dad's Fano from Tomanui, yeah. and so I was at a dance class with my daughter the other day, tiny little ballet class. Yeah. I don't know if we can call it dance yet, but anyway, um, and a woman walked in late, and she was like, "I'm so sorry, my daughter's been in Tomanui with her grandparents." Immediately, I was over there while the kids were dancing, totally. and I was like, "So totally. you know what part of Tomanui yeah. from? Her and you yeah. know, and." We have this connection now where I see yes. I understand a bit about, and it's her partner's whānau that live there. But yeah, I just think there's so much when you know, you know, that's why I love hearing people's mahis and I love giving mine A because it frightens a hell of people that this white lady stands up and I can deliver a really pepeha. beautiful pepeha. Yeah. But like, 
yeah, I think it's, and they'll come over to me after, like, Nati Hawati Hapu, that's all, you know, oh, I've got to find it. And you uh, just start, yeah, you this go. chat starts coming. So, yeah, I couldn't say that that's more important if you try it, eh? knowing, yes, knowing all that stuff about totally. yourself. And totally. so, so sets your foundation of your, yes. Yeah. And it starts a domino like that. Yeah. It just starts a domino effect. So you can see how that becomes the anchor and then courage itself becomes critical to fulfill the, the anchor because without the courage you won't step forward and be that person. Yeah. You'll hide it and then now we've got shame, we haven't got pride. Mm. And they're completely different psychological chains of events which are incredibly powerful. Mm. And so the courage allows us to bring the, the, the ancestry, the whakapapa, the history forward and own it. This is me. Mm. Now we've really got the quintessential weirdo. And you watch, the quintessential weirdo doesn't have to think about what they eat. The quintessential weirdo doesn't have to think about wellness. The quintessential weirdo is well because they aren't actually direct things that they spend time on anyway. Mm. It's, just, it's just part of, the, part it's just part of, of yeah. it. They are being themselves. And then within that space, it'll have all the things that people try and prioritise but they can't because they're operating from the 2.2% of all wealth, which yeah. is you are nobody. We'll just give you a little bit of dog scraps, yeah. right? That's Keep essentially fighting. what that's essentially what that is. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll set it up to just have so many layers of power and control behind it, so you never actually even see that. Yeah. Um, that that then becomes our focus. Or we get wellness by leaving it alone. We get wellness by who are you, and then having courage. The courage, but it's probably worthy of chatting about as well because there's some real powerful stuff now that when they do brain imaging they've found that when someone has a courageous perspective when adversity comes or challenge comes so for example like COVID yeah. it's just another thing that's coming at us um, with the courageous perspective it allows us to use it, activate our frontal lobe to our big brain mm -hmm. which then means we can connect we can talk, we can share about our vulnerabilities, we can look at what a plan could be, we can get mentors on board, we can build a plan, we can get into gear, we can review what's happening and we do it collectively yeah. and now we've got good team. Mm. That could be you and partner, whatever. Yeah, yeah. If we don't have a courageous perspective but we have a fear-based perspective, like um, um, let's say with COVID, I, I could get sick and die. Right, there's, a, there's an example of it. That then has the opposite effect. It shuts down the big part of our brain and opens up the animal part of our brain, which is panic, yeah. fight, flight, freeze. Yeah, yeah. So then, this is why courage is so important to understand that, is we need the courageous perspective to operate in a space which has multi-dimensions, which are often really challenging, confusing, um, potentially threatening, risque things attached. So you see how with all that type of context, if we haven't got the courageous perspective, it overwhelms us. Yeah. And then we just shut down or flee. And so for me, that's where the courage bit for me about wellness is so important. And there's another part, like it just starts to unra unravel. Um, they did a simple study with people with snake phobia. They took 60. They didn't ask me to be part of uh, it, yeah. but um, I would have... Yeah, we would have both been in it. Like, they scared the shit out of me. And they took 60 people that had diagnosable snake phobia, put them in an MRI tube, and then built a conveyor belt at their feet. And they gave them a little machine, which is a button to make the conveyor belt come towards them or further away. And all they did was put a snake on it. Oh, shit. Right? So they... I like to think that they put a cobra snake on it, like a deadly... <laughs> and then right, they had to sign a little consent form saying, look, we're probably picking three or four of you will die. And then it would have been a real experiment, but it was a safe snake. <laughs> but anyway, all of them had a powerful reaction to the snake. So they all had their fear area in their brain and the limbic system really awake. Mm. Boom! All of them had fear. They thought that if the ones who pushed the button to be courageous and make the snake come closer, they'd have less fear. But it didn't happen. So the, all had fear. Ones that pushed the button to make the snake come closer still had the same fear. Now what that tells us, for me, when I look at what that means, is it means that fear is neurological. It's always going to happen. Yeah. It's always going to trigger off. It is designed to make us careful. Boom, be careful, snake. Yeah. Right? Boom, be careful, COVID virus. Boom, they've told us it will kill us. Mm. Be careful. So that's all it's set to do. So it's never going to be able to be made smaller. So people will try and stop their anxiety or they try and stop their, their feeling afraid. I'm just saying, just leave it alone. Mm. Don't worry about going to see a psychologist about it because we'll talk about what you do do. Yeah. But the irony is they can't do anything because that's neurological. And that's what I found over the years as a clinical psych is I got to a point where people come with panic attacks. 
I wouldn't do anything with a panic attacks because it's boom, it's that. I, it's neurological, I can't touch it, I'll just leave it alone. We can do other stuff and this is what they found. The ones that pushed the button to make the snake come closer, that stayed the same. And this whole new area woke up next to it and they've never seen that before. So it's a courage area. Wow. So fear area, courage area, which makes sense you have those areas. Mm. They could have called it anything because I'd never found it before. So it was brand new. Yeah. They called it the SGACC or something. So it's a long chemical name. Yeah. I'm just going, why don't they call it the lioness? All right, mm. The lioness wakes up. All right. Challenge comes, protect. lioness wakes up. Yeah, yeah protector. Yeah. Right. Because it's like, there's fear. And then they could have gone, now we've got a lioness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't worry, she's coming. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. And then imagine talking to your daughters when they're little. Do you know you've got a lion in your brain? Yeah. It's a lioness too, sweetheart. <laughs> so you straight away, and then what they, but the real key thing here is, is that fear, then the lioness wakes up. <coughs> mm. But now it's six seconds. One and two and three and four and five and six, and then they push the button. So what that says is the courage reaction is unconscious. It's six seconds from when they f brain fires up courage to then acting courageously. Now that's massive, eh? Like when you think about that, wow. and this is where it becomes really, really important. So if it's habitual, snake. Yeah. Um, if we, if we don't have the lion, the ones that did push them in and make the snake go away, it's like meow, 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 yeah. meow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> because it's habitual, is unless we practice it, say, it's yeah. not going to happen. Mm. You'll have meow, 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 meow. And then we're just petrified, yeah. scared, irritable bowel syndrome, go to the yeah. toilet a lot, can't sleep, um, worried, mm. self-doubting, fear of failure, performance anxiety, yeah. <coughs> that sort of thing if, if it's an athlete, right? Yeah. That's that. With meow, meow, meow. So we have to train courage. Say, is it trainable? And then what, this is where it's really cool. So now we've got yin and yang. You've got yeah. the dark side or the, the fear, so then you've got the yin, which is the shadow, yeah. and we've got the light, which is the courage. Yeah. And now we've got, because the yin and yang is just energy. Yeah. So that's why I never want to take people's anxiety away. I never want their fears to leave them. I want them to always be there because it's energy. Yeah. And if people can understand it's their best friend because it's like, <laughs> this is where it gets really wacky. If that's a shadow, it's dark. If it's energy, it's dark energy. The most powerful energy in the universe is dark energy or dark matter. They can't see it but they know it influences it because it moves planets and pulls things all around the stars, all around the universe. So it's the most powerful energy in the universe. That's our fear. And then our courage is the thing that balances it out. Yeah. We get harmony and now we can tap it, we can use it and we can bring our, also our light energy. So then we become, if we think about motivation yeah. and energy versus feeling flat and lethargic, if, if the woman listening to them are feeling flat and lethargic and they think they're just not motivated, my challenge to them is they're afraid. So athletes, if they wake up on the morning of a big moment and they are flat, they're petrified. But they'll come out and say, oh, I'm just feeling really flat today, they haven't got any energy. No shit, Sherlock, because you're meow, 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 meow. That is, from a, I manage the Waikato Bay for right. the New Zealand secondary school's kids, yeah. and that so makes sense now how often they've woken up and gone, I'm just... I just feel really flat today. Yeah. Like, what should I do? And our, we'll often give them a barocca and yeah, stuff. That's like, why oh, this will, this will help me pick it. Ah. Oh. If only I'd known you guys, uh, you'd have been getting a lecture about courage. Totally. And yeah. then that's where we just bring the lion. Then all of a sudden people wake up, boom, they're away. Wow. And so that's when you think about wellness, you go identity and courage times courage gives us weirdo. Yeah. Then there's your wellness. The wellness will take care of itself because everything else has becomes, it's just the way that you live. You'll be at that point, you'll be wishing that food wasn't a tablet because you haven't got enough time. Honestly, you will. You'll be like, whoa, I've got time to eat. Yeah. We've got all the shit to do. Yeah. And then, then we've got real magic because that then is I can now connect with people and talk with them vulnerably. So we think about what's wellness if we go through a relationship. Like, I'm really happy you asked me for coffee, but we're, we just don't connect. connect. Yeah, yeah. So let's just, let's just call it a day. Yeah, yeah. Or I will need to talk to you later about who's mentoring you because I need them to mentor me because I've got this business idea that I reckon is going to run yeah. in Siberia. Mm. There's the next bit. So there's layers. Yeah. The wellness comes into all of that stuff because now we're living into it with identity and courage. Love that, David. It's like that state of flow, eh? Once yes, you, totally. Once you find that, mm. which I still struggle to find, you know, but mm. I think it's a constant work on. I think that's one of those perceptions that people think once you get there, you're there. Correct. 
or like they'll see someone else and go, oh, I wish I could be like yeah. her. And she gets, she, you know, she takes the kids to school and she does all mm. these things and she mm. still managed to go to the gym mm. and, and she has business and, and all this stuff. And, and they model what they think a state of flow is. But yeah, so true. Mm. Mm. So true. Mm. And you would stop worrying about all of that stuff totally. if you had that. Totally. Your equation. Absolutely. Sorted. Yeah. Be like, I don't care what you're doing. Yeah. I'm good. Exactly. And then when they're raising children, that's the equation we live by. So it's more about how do we help our children know who they are and where they're from. Mm. And then it gets deeper as they get across time because you've got to, sometimes you've got to filter through some stories from the family because some they don't need to know about yeah. and some need a reframe and some just need to be left behind. So we get to build that history for them. And then we add in daily activities of courage. Yeah. We think about do we buy a trampoline with or without a, without a fence, for example, but we're just constantly thinking how do we, you know, like, it starts to make so much common sense. If our children ride in Range Rovers every day, mm. they're not going to have much resilience. But if they ride to school on a camel, they're going to be pretty <laughs> resilient buggers, right? So it's like it's no, it's no different. Yeah. And so the courage bit is how do we do that? Well, we just make life, we just make life difficult yeah. by leaving th certain things out that other kids might have, yeah. because by the time they're 15, that's going to be the biggest gifts we could have given them a struggle. Yeah. So one thing with 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 a woman even attempting to get into that flow state and, and trying to be there. And I think it's quite a hard mm. target and, and something to work towards. Mm. Um, while she's trying to get there, she's still obviously trying to get to that wellness space mm. and trying to mm. carve time out mm. in her day for herself. Um, and I think it's one of those, again, I keep talking about perceptions today, but we have this thing where we have to justify how our time is spent and mm. we've got to... We've got to be like, well, I've already done X, Y, and Z, so, so mm. it's okay if I mm. have a cup of tea mm. and center myself and, mm. and just stop or mm. go to the hairdresser or have a workout mm. or walk with my friend. Um, but then we also have the flip side where uh, we set up an ideal day. So we're like, right, in, in an ideal world, yeah. I'd be exercising five days a week, because, but for an ideal day, the weather needs to be good, my children need to be well, my boss didn't stress me out at work. I left on mm, time. Mm, mm. I don't know all these all these ideals. And honestly, on those ideal days, that would never. I would never do anything for myself if I if I set that bar. Mm. So In perfection. Mm. What what are like some baseline things they can say to themselves, or or when they're setting these goals? Goals upset me a little bit. It's a deep cabin mm. for me too. But what could they do to? to deal with, it's that the resilience like we were talking about mm. earlier, you mm. know, when the challenge comes to face you, instead of going, oh, well, not today then, can't, can't mm. do whatever that was for myself mm. and going how, how to be able to take it and then go, you know what, I still know for me to be able to function really well for the rest of the day, I need to take that 15 minutes mm. or 30 mm. minutes. Mm. So where to start to achieve that? Yeah. Like, I, I, I guess this, the, that's it. As part of having that conversation, mm -hmm. it sort of brings us back to, you know, like for me about allocating time to yourself. Really, it's a reflection of your own self-worth. Mm -hmm. Like you're identifying that actually the way that your weekly schedule looks with a time out versus time in, it gives me more of an idea about how you value yourself um, and in relation to others. So if we come back to, if they can do their work on their identity, now their self-value goes up. Yeah. So now the idea of valuing yourself becomes more acceptable, more important. But if you don't think of yourself very highly and you value yourself at the bottom of the chain, then everything else will take precedence over you because you're, you know, in that sense, you're worth less. Yeah. So I always come back to, okay, if you're struggling to put time for yourself, it's because you don't value that you're worthy of that time. And then you go, okay, so that's where I would be then going, that that's the reality that was versus the reality that is and the reality that's going to be. And so if there's someone who's struggling to attribute time um, to themselves, they could then try and get better time management or they could try and get all these things yeah. to help them do those things, yeah. which then makes them feel like they're just useless. Yeah. They can't even do that. They can't even get 15 minutes to go for a jog, right? And you feel like you failed. That's right. Uh, yeah, and then the next thing, you know, one day you not, then you don't run again for like two, two months. Yeah. Um, and then just hit the chocolate. So that's that. That's how that works. And then, so for me, it's like, okay, so if I can forget about attributing time, but I'm going to attribute time, 
the who am I and understanding that person and having your pepeha, knowing your whakapapa, then it comes to us, so let's say you're, have, you've got children with them, uh, you know, you're married and you've got children. Well, then now I'm actually, when I'm talking about attributing time to yourself, I'm actually going to be more, put more pressure on you to watch the conversations you have with your husband. Yeah, I agree. So then how often do you sit down with a cup of tea and go, so if you and I are married, yeah. sit down with a cup of tea, hey, sweetheart, how are you? Mm-hmm. Then you go, blah, 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 And then you go, sweetheart, how are you? And then I go, blah, 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 blah. And then that's how you and I am. Mm-hmm. And then I go, okay, so how are we? Yeah. And now that's about you and me. Yeah. And then now if I'm the woman in that conversation, I can say, sweetheart, I'm really struggling. At the moment, I've got this stuff I'm doing and I really need to exercise. I really need to get some time out to go to the gym because that's where I feel most alive. We need to have a conversation about that because at the moment it's not working with everything the way we're rolling. So you see how the issue isn't the exercising. The issue is what's going on underneath that. You don't get A, to value yourself, and then B, create an environment that facilitates you to do that without guilt. And so there's the conversation, but this is the irony. The going to the gym won't be the issue. The marriage will be the issue. The relationship will be the issue. And now we're talking really deep. Because how are we? Well, I'm not sure I love you. Now we're starting to get really, because you don't, you, don't, you don't acknowledge me, you don't spend time with me, you're going fishing all the time, you don't take me to the parties, you just go with your mates. Like, we've been married 20 years, it feels like we're just yeah. ships in the night. Mm. That's the issue, not the wow. working out. Yeah, yeah. So that's if we, a hard issue to Yeah, work. that's right. Totally. Mm. So, but it might be we're deeply in love, we're going really, really well, but we're just so busy. So it's all those possibilities, but we won't know unless we ha- have the how are we. So if I know who I am, woman or man, I now have pride in that, and now I'll protect it. Mm. One of the yeah, if, well, if one of my needs mm. is I need to be fit because we do we fit we we know fit people are happier people. Yeah. So it's endorphins, it's all of those things. Mm. So we need to have exercise. If I value me, I'll then value exercise because that's going to give me longevity that's going to make me more available to my kids, more available to my community, more able to be a coach, more able to be good at work with my colleagues. So it's just layers, so it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Then if it's not happening, I would then say, if I'm supporting that person, I'd say, okay, so you've been trying to exercise for two months, it ain't happening. Let's stop talking about exercise because that ain't the shit that's going on. Mm. How are you? Yeah. How are you and he? How's he, right? So now it's, yeah. now it's a different conversation. So how are you, how am I? How are we? Weekly cup of tea, Sunday night, quiet time, kids are going to bed. That's the moment. Because yeah. then the extension of that is, how are you going at being my husband? How am I going at being your wife? Yeah. Right? And now we've got another layer. That'll be a fun conversation. Totally. Yeah. Which is, mate, I don't, I've never seen you do the dishes. Yeah. I've never seen you do the cleaning. Oh, I'm all cleaning the shower for. Yeah. <laughs> right? An interesting one is, if we go right back to that 2.2% of, yeah. of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. stuff. Is the, is the thing, like for a woman, often if the kids are sick, it's us. And it's not a judgment on anybody, but it's often because the husband earns all money. My fam- that's our family too, and I get reminded of that when I was working full time, and he was working full time, and then I'd ring and go, hey, someone's sick, you need, someone needs to go home with them. He'd go, but I've got this, this, and this on. I'm like, yeah, but I've got this, this, and this on. And I'd get reminded really quickly, Your well, it needs to be you because I need to be here because this brings most money in and that's what we need for our mortgage and for our food yeah, for the yeah, kids yeah, yeah, and you know yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and all this stuff and so that's pretty demoralizing when you you, you know straight away in your place yeah and, but because I was a teacher at that stage it's, I can't just up and leave that's mm. a ratio you know mm, so it was totally. a really that became a really tumultuous conversation yeah. to sort of navigate to go ah, really tricky we're not, I'm not in this by myself man and, and really I need tricky. to be at work so we need, we need to sort it out which and he was really good about it but um it also is just that that's the go-to totally he earns all money so i need to i need to make sure i'm picking up all of this that's side right. and making sure he's okay and then the guy buys the hundred fifty thousand dollar boat <laughs> and the woman gets the twelve thousand dollar sewing machine it's like what the heck you know like come on yeah. so that's that conversation yeah. we take care of that conversation week by week it can be a glass of wine it can be a cup of tea but mm. finding time each week to have that yeah is then going to let it, eh? totally of it. exactly exactly and then that means that the relationship will be then connected to what started it mm. the love the passion the romance the the shared meaning the shared projects all of those sorts of things then stay alive because we do that mm. and then the time to exercise the time to go shopping the time to get the hair done the time to have time with friends over coffee yeah. 
that's all just part of, oh, sweetheart, what's, what's on your calendar this week? Yeah. Oh, I've got coffee with Sophie tomorrow. I'm taking my mum out on Friday afternoon to go to the, the um, doctors. And then I'm playing, um, I'm going to, I'm going to pick out on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, that's good, sweetheart. You're going to have a pretty active week. Um, I'm, I'm blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then where we go, and so the woman goes pig hunting on Sunday. The, the it, it's all set up, so the father's at home doing yeah. the doing the whatever. And now we've got a now we've got a relationship. Now we've got a partnership. Mm. And then we can get to take care of the wellness. So if they value themselves, which will come from doing their identity work, setting up the conversation is the most important part. And then the weekly schedule can be evolved. Mm. The monthly schedule can be evolved. The the trip to Queenstown with the girls once a year can be on the calendar, yep. and we know it's coming because it's been on the calendar. It's yep. for three weeks yep. to go skiing or whatever it is. Yeah. That is all locked in the program based on the conversations in the new year or the start of the whatever. And then that's the extension of the week chat to the year chat to the PhD chat to the new job chat to when are we going to move to Wanaka chat? When are we going to move to Auckland so yeah. I can pursue my business chat? Yeah. We've been here for three years with the engineering work, but when am I going to get my turn? Or, yeah. you know, 10 or to years? the, uh, I'm 35, maybe it's time for a career change. I might need to go back and study. Yeah, totally. What? Totally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I still don't think, I, said, I actually said this literally last night after I was um, at the CEO launch, and mm. I said to my husband, I still don't think that I'm doing the right thing yet for me. Like, I, I'm doing some really cool yeah. things for people, yeah, yeah, and we've yeah, got yeah. the charity stuff, and we've got this, and there's still just something not Nothing. quite. Yeah. Then, I well, don't know what it is, but I assume I know what it is now, but yeah, he must think every time I start that conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, what now? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. then that's another example of you value yourself, you allow yourself to, to get in touch with the picture, mm. because if we work to a picture and you're the artist, well then, no, that's, that's right, I need that, that's the good, but there needs something else in there, then you can have that conversation, because mm. we want him to be doing the same, Yeah. and you to be doing the same. There was um, a lady spoke yesterday, Kitty Nathan. Have you heard of Kitty? She's mm. a New Zealand fashion designer, okay. but New Zealand Māori fashion mm. designer. And she said for the last 10 years, she's always wanted to be able to speak to your Māori full conversational and not just speak it, you know. And it was always this goal of hers. And this year she was like, I'm bloody doing it. She, you know, and, and there's a lot that sits behind that of, of her why and, and, and what was there. But she committed to it that it's nine to three every day she speaks full to or Māori and she's doing this course and it's a non-negotiable now. So people will ring her and go, like yesterday she needed to be, well, she was asked to be at this course at 12.30. Yeah. And she, on the phone, she's like, oh no, like they've helped me get where I am. This community of women are behind me. I oh, actually no, I've I've committed to this, and if I miss that, I can't get that time back because it's all part of the the course that she's doing. So she said to them, "Would it be okay if I came after three o'clock when it finishes?" And immediately they were like, "Absolutely, no problem." And she said, "I in other places yeah. I'd get met with, well, we really need you to be here for this, and, and we've yeah. done this for you.'" And she said that this doesn't happen there, but she's been able to prioritise that. She's doing that. She's running a mentorship for 20 other Māori fashion designers. She has her children. She has her business. And she said, I've never been so tired as mm -hmm. having newborn mm -hmm. as I am now. But she said, I also haven't been this energised yeah. or passionate and because she's tired. feeding off her mentors, mentor rees that yeah. she has. Yeah. But she's living her, her mm -hmm. money and, and she's doing all those things that just feed her soul. I was sitting like, oh, man, you like... That is, is that makes me so proud and it's I hope, inspiring. yeah, yeah. And, and as she said, it's not an easy decision, you know, but you, you get in behind it and you do it because yeah. she knows how full her soul will be and already is. Yes. Yeah. And I love that because we go back to the identity part. When we get the identity clear, mm. it's now a mirror challenge every day about whether you honoring that or you're all shit. Yeah. And so she's honoring it. Yeah. And one of, hard one of the out. things she, she said was, can I, at the end of every day, proudly tell my children mm. what I did? If not, something's wrong. And so mm. she said that's how she started mm. making some really serious decisions. Could I get to the end of the day and go, I proudly did X, Y, and Z today, and, mm. I, and I'm making a difference here. And Or are there some decisions there that I'm like, oh, I don't really want to tell you that I that's decided right. that today or I, I did like that. that. And I was I like, like, that's that. so cool. That's a really good technique, yeah. isn't it? And that's, you know, mm. that comes down to how we work here is, I say we don't work with shitheads, but we don't work with shitheads, mm. and, and we we make a point. The office staff will tell you that I talk about it often. Like we'll meet people and really get a full gauge before we ever engage in mm. working with them because mm. it's so critical. Mm. The totally. amount of time you spend with them, but also being attached to them, means that yeah. people think you think the same way or yeah. act the same way. Yeah. So it's so yeah. all painted with crucial. the same brush, good or not good. Yeah, 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 totally cool. Nice.
Mm. Um, yeah. And women often, I guess, feel afraid or unsure of, mm. of how to, to start. And whether that's wellness, and any part of that wellness journey, or whether mm. that's mm. a career change or mm. starting pottery, like yeah, me. Totally. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is. And having the, and the, again, that's something so serious to unpack, I guess. But how, how would you tell them to start? Well, yeah, for sure. The, the the key bit is if we can keep remembering the foundation to all of the actions. Mm. And so if we come back to understanding that unless we're training courage as a habit, their primary philosophy will be to be careful yeah. because that's what the fear generates. If we have a fear response in our brain, it leads to a careful and conservative pattern. Mm. Um, so from careful and conservative, you're always doing things to avoid failing, always doing things to avoid upsetting That's, that's something I learned from you when you spoke at uh, my son's school. Uh, you said, how often do you hear a mother say, be careful? Yes. And I was like, oh, that's like me all the time. Totally. Trampoline, be careful. Running yeah. on cobblestones, be careful, please. Yeah. And you're like, that's, that's a mum saying she loves you. You know, like, <laughs> but actually, we need to try and stop saying that, mm. you know, and not have road cones everywhere that's yeah. warning them every three seconds that Correct. something bad could happen. Correct. Um, yeah. And, and take that careful part out of it because yeah. they've got to learn, yes. you know. Well, we, want them to, we want them to be paying attention. Yeah. Like, and you're so right. So if we have that understanding that that's going to be happening because it's neurological, unless we're doing that to match it, we're going to be, our primary default will always to be careful. Yeah. So we're never going to take risks. Mm. We'll be doing a, a half hour health and safety briefing before any damn thing. Yeah. And then the moment's <laughs> gone. So... <laughs> So true. Yeah, it is. That's where I, I look honestly. I just it does my head, and I understand we want people to get home at the end of the day to mm. their families, but it's gone a little bit far, and then ironically, it's making it more unsafe now because it stopped people thinking for themselves. I've just come from Cambridge to come and catch up with you, and what they've done in all the all the all the inner in a circle of roads around Cambridge Village, mm. they've put um, judder bars on all of the crossroads. So you're driving, every crossroad now has a double judder bar to slow you down as you're coming to a T and a, a cross oh, intersection. Not a, not a, not a um, <laughs> pedestrian crossing. All the pedestrian crossings I saw now have been painted purple and lot bright paints with road, permanent road markers. Like, <gasps> like that type of thing. Yeah, no. And it's, so you see how it's forcing us now, it's, it's, it's forcing us to respond rather than to think. Yeah. But I'll oh, slow down. Versus watching, thinking, looking, making decisions. So yeah. that's it. So if we get. Oh, I just got off track. The, <laughs> so that point of where do we start is if we can understand that if we can ha identify the importance of daily courage. Mm. We, we heard, a, heard a lovely quote from a young woman who's over in Europe pursuing her dreams um, in sport, and she's been over there for maybe eight years. Like middle of COVID, we're going to level four lockdown. She's charging across Europe in a truck picking up stock, <laughs> pulled over by a policeman, the policeman goes, can I please see your license? She's only like class four trucks, pulls out a New Zealand license oh and the no. cop goes, you're in the middle of COVID, or it's just COVID's going crazy, you're from New Zealand, you're driving a truck through the middle of the night across borders. He's like, that's epic. And then she just, he just let her go. Really? So she's just living up an adventure. Um, and she had this thing, which is 10 seconds of courage. Like what a cool little wee, just a little mindset yeah. that daily practice of 10 seconds of courage multiple times a day generates a habitual reaction to those times when people go Phoomph. they feel that back lean back or handbrake come on a little bit that's the moment for 10 seconds of courage yeah. so if they can get into the habit of yes step in yes step in yes i will get there yes i will try pocket pottery Butter. right so there's 10 seconds of courage at that decision point yeah, yeah i'll step in i'll do that that then sets up an habitual pattern unconsciously in the person that they step into or they lean into the moment. And then that allows us to then create a different paradigm versus be careful to be courageous. I want to find more out about that. Yeah. I'm going to think about that overnight. I don't make a decision yet because I'm interested. Yeah. So even if that's the first step, yeah. it doesn't mean to say we have to be all in this week or this year. Mm. And then that allows us to take agency and start to create what it is that we want our world to look like. And if they've done the identity work and they've done their why off the mm. back of not who they are, that's, that's the first bit we talked about, but you add in then who am I and what's my why? Yeah. 
and now we can generate a picture of that. What's my why as a, as a woman, as a parent, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And now you've got the picture. Okay, so now we've got the picture. Now we know where our step in points are, so it's not impulsive. Mm -hmm. Some things may be, and you're like, yeah, that'll be so much fun, then do it. <laughs> but if it's attached to the picture, no, 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 yes. Now I will do that. Yeah. So that might be five years you've been waiting for that one. Yeah. And then you're in with your whole heart and soul, but you've meant you've had to say no. That's a pretty good offer, but no. Yeah. Because it's harder sometimes to go no. It is, no, 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 yes. That's the clarity of the why. So if they've done that work and they're practicing courage as a habit, then that'll be unconscious. It won't, they won't have to think that. It'll be unconscious from the stomach, from the heart. Boom, they're in. They've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to ask me that for five years because that's the key thing for me for my picture. Yeah. And we're away. So that that's probably the that's the essence of it and then again we don't have to worry about taking care of being afraid or being nervous or being doubtful or trying to get ourselves to do things mm -hmm. from that paradigm it will happen unconsciously and all of a sudden we're in we're doing so how do you how do you courageously say that no because i think that's something that we all struggle with is yeah. that again it comes back to that expectation that we shouldn't even worry what they're thinking mm -hmm. what expectation they have we shouldn't be worrying mm -hmm. about it but we you know often we're like oh well I do have the time, so I could do, you know, whether mm. that's helping out at school, mm. whether that's picking up extra jobs at work, or, yeah. you know, there are things you know in your gut you don't want to do, mm. and it's violently telling you, this is not what we, mm. this is not what we want to do here, but you're like, oh, okay, I'll do it, mm. and yeah, how do you, yeah, how do you do that yes, no? It's, I guess there's some real rawness in there, which yeah. is... <laughs> until you until you get to a point where you don't need everyone to be your friend, yeah, it just comes with age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> until you until you can't until you get over the bit where you want everyone to think you're the princess or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. you'll say yes, 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 yes to the cows come home because you want to be the good daughter or the good girl, yeah. uh, or you want people to like you. So you're never going to say no because that then means that's compromised and that's like a no-no. So then you're un basically it's a, it's an addiction. It's an OCD. Mm -hmm. I have to unless that happens, I feel bad. Yeah. So then I'm forced to say yes because unless I say yes, I'm gonna feel bad. So I never say no. So it's understanding that. But yeah. so the identity, but again, becomes key because if we value ourselves, I don't need you to value me for me to have that sense of inner stability. Yeah. So you've got to find your own stability so that now I can not give a sh rat's ass what you think because yeah. unless I have that stability, I will care yeah. about the wrong things. And so again, we see we keep coming and back to the same to same thing. Who we are and, our why. and then when we value ourselves, I don't need you to value me. So now we can have a no strings attached conversation yeah. where I don't need you to like me, I don't need to like you, I don't need you to be my my, my coffee buddy. Yeah. We can I just have a, I don't need to agree with an opinion. Totally. That I we can just have a conversation. With, yeah. yeah. And now we're away. Now we've yeah. got freedom. Um that all comes off that space. And then if I value myself then it also means that I'm very clear what things, I, like we said, so then I value the picture, so now I know what I'll say yes to, and then you can say, look, it's, it sounds like a really exciting opportunity that you're offering me, but just as a little bit of context, I've got this five-year plan to do these six things. If I say yes to you, I can't do that. Yeah. So I'm really sorry I can't say yes. Yeah. That's a nice little way, way that you can do it with someone, or you can say, I'm sorry my diary's full. Because actually it is. Yeah. I'd really love to, but my diary's full. And, they, yeah. and everyone's like, sweet, thanks very much for letting yeah. us know, not leading us down a path. Because often people say yes, yes, yes. And then it gets so desperate that they're falling over, there's water leaking out of the bucket all over the place. And then they ring up and say, I'm sorry, I'm sick, I can't. Yeah. And then they let people down. Because yeah. they've been saying yes, yes, yes. And then they fall over and say, I'm sorry, I'm out, because I'm so stressed. Yeah. And now they've said no, which is like, oh, you, you knew that mm. five steps back. And now we've got to it, which is no, silly. Mm -hmm. Two people, two, I'm pretty sure you know both of them, who are really good at that, about just saying no and being honest. No because. Yeah. And not like, oh, but maybe next time, is um, Tonya K. Ward and Sasha yeah. Coburn. I reckon two, those two are role models for mm -hmm. being able to be like, mm -hmm. so this is my plan, currently doesn't fit into that. Good luck. Yeah. And I'm totally here. Yeah. And I've got you back, but that's, that's not where I'm sitting at the moment. Totally. I so respect that. I think that's a really, mm. it's not even being brave, it's just about being, totally. just standing and yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Just, just knowing you're, it's yes. not brave to say yes or no, it's just Correct. being good with it, and it's, which and takes it, work. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and, you, and we look at all the things we've been talking about, that 2.2% of yeah. all wealth, 
what do we want the machine to create in people is we want people to be tired, have no time, not to know who they are, not to know where they're from, not to know what their picture is, um, petrified of not saying yes to people. So now you're so shallow and widespread, you're never going to be an effective threat on anything. Yeah. So you can see how it all starts to, how we socialise? How do we socialise our little girls? How do we socialise them once they get to school? How does that happen when they get to high school? What do they need to wear when they start to get to high school versus what they wore at primary school? Why would we want them to wear those things? Why don't they wear shorts at school? Mm. You know, like all of these things, I'm just starting looking and go, well, that's all part of, so now you're being controlled to be a robot. Yeah. Same same, I think both genders are controlled in the same way to facilitate that 2.2%. Yeah. Because then the, the gender, other gender f believes that's, oh, that's right, that's how it's supposed to be. I'm yeah. supposed to have the big boat. Yeah. Or, or are not aware because it's been so ingrained. Correct. They're like, no, oh, I totally support females to do this and this. Correctly. Yeah. I'm not sexist. Yeah. Boom, I'm not racist. Boom. I'm, I'm a total yeah, way. Yeah. It's like, well, actually, let's just yeah, have a yeah. look at it. Let's unpack that a little bit. Yeah, yeah just, let's have a look at the bank accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the card? Oh dear. So that really leads, leads well onto that sort of the, the self talk to self talk. Yeah. Self talk and, yeah. and changing that negative to positive or again like those those things you can say to yourself or situations again that make you feel uncomfortable mm. Mm. that will often sit quietly and nod until it's over. Like you yeah. Oh no, this is not the place for me. Yeah. And, and you sit there and you smile. Can't yeah, leave yeah. Yet. And, Why yeah. can't you leave yet? And, yeah. And it's, but, but to anybody else looking at you, A, you look happy, but B, you look like you're agreeing with whatever's happening because you're just yeah. awkwardly waiting. Totally. And then that's where that sort of toxic stuff happens mm. where someone goes, but she agreed with me because she was totally nodding. Like, mm. so Daz is, she's, she's yeah. with me on this. Whereas yeah. actually you're sitting there, whether that's politics or world exactly. you know world problems and you don't just want to weigh in for whatever reason you're or anything what a bunch of morons yeah and you're like oh no or or sometimes for me like my brother-in-law is so smart he is worldly he's six years younger than me and good lord that kid is smart he's not a kid anymore andrew you're not a kid anymore um but even when he was when i first met him at 16 i knew not to talk politics <laughs> history like i had a list of things if <laughs> it came up i just went mute because yeah, i didn't yeah. want to get involved because he would own me in a good way yeah. like because he was so confident in yeah. you yeah. but he was he he was so informed i wasn't so it wasn't my place to even attempt to have an opinion because i'd just get destroyed mm. so you sort of sit there like and i think we keep doing that not just as women i think as men as well people just yeah instead of sort of either confidently going I don't need to be here, so I'm just going to cruise or, or whatever. We, yeah, and then we sometimes sit there going, God, I'm stupid. I should know. I should know mm. more. I do that as well about mm. the world. Like I'll hear mm. things and go, Oh, I didn't even know that. Or oh, I'm sure I was wittier. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. So wittier. Aren't they? Again, some of my staff are so fast, and I can't come yeah. back quick enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then three days later, I'm yeah, like, I should have said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We did that last week. <laughs> yeah. You're like, wow. Yeah, but we we are really mean to ourselves, I think, and it's how to. Yeah, change the narrative that's actually happening mm. in here. And I know, again, it's going to come down to connecting to all those baseline mm. things. Who am I? Um, but how, I guess how, it's such a process. This is going to be massive for a lot of women who are watching this of, mm. of where do I start? Or, you know, mm. how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time sort of stuff? But mm. if there was one thing to say about that positive mm. self-talk, what would you get them to really focus on or hone in on to support mm. that kindness. Because as you said earlier, you know, if I, if I say I'm shit at it, then that's just mm. going to be the spiral mm. effect down. Mm. So there's, there's a couple of really key things when we think about self-talk and self-thinking. Is that, um, so for example with athletes, that I'm working in, in trying to help them because that's the conscious layer. So mm -hmm. our thinking is in our conscious realm. And that's our brain doing what it was designed to do. So it'll tell you you're an ugly piece of shit. And it'll tell you that you're a wonderful person in a thousandth of a second apart. Yeah. It'll do that because it, that's what it's done. You're thick, you're smart, you're, you're ugly, you're not. You know, it's just all of these things is the way our mind is when you think about the machine that's operating. We're be, it, it, it's got all this shit from all around the world about how to think about ourselves. And it's just, re, it's just pushing broken record it's just playing it over and it just does it along the spectrum from dark to light horrible to lovely and then I've got to a point where I actually think both ends are just as damaging like thinking I'm an amazing yeah. person or I'm a shitty person 
I reckon they're both as distracting from being in the moment. So if we can have a philosophy that actually my conscious world is my conscious world and I'm just going to stop trying to understand it. Yeah. I'm even just going to let it just go ahead and think what you're thinking up there because yeah. I know it's going to think crap and it's going to think great and it's just noise. The challenge is then how do we drop into the unconscious world yeah. because it's the unconscious world where our potential lies, not in the conscious world. So the, the key art then becomes well, how much time do you spend on your breathing? How much time do you spend on the bridge between the conscious and the unconscious? All I'm wanting athletes to do is to get to a point where they can focus. Yeah. So they just have a focus point. So their job is they've got noise, 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 noise. Now that then they learn how to focus, which is now dropping in. So we're dropping into the unconscious and then to act. Okay. So our job is to get our picture right. What are the things we want to be acting in? Yeah. Pottery. So get yourself to pottery. Your yeah. mind's going to be chitter chatter, chitter chatter, chitter chatter, chitter chatter, right? Leave it alone. Driving along, you're gonna break everything. You're not gonna. You're yeah. a terrible potter. Out. <laughs> right? Driving along, got the radio playing, singing to your favourite song. Your music, your mind's chipping away at the top. Get to the pottery, and you're like, it's in the car, and you're nervous as hell. Now it's ten seconds of courage. Yeah. Get out of the car. Lock the car. Get in through the door. Now you're in. Yeah. Chitter 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 chitter. Just leave it. Chitter chitter. Find a seat. Sit. Okay. Whew, nervous man. I'm so nervous. All right. People just go and get your clay from over there. Womp. Ten seconds of courage. Get the clay back now on the on the wheel, however that works, right? <laughs> and now you're in gear. The chat has been the same. Yeah. So you haven't had once say, no, come on, sweetheart, you've got this girl, you can believe in yourself, like, yeah. leave it all alone. Yeah. Just know what the plan is for the action that you're gonna take and are taking, and then you drop into the plan. Yeah. What's the plan for the first night of pottery? How does that roll out? I leave her at quarter past six, right? There's our first step, we're in the mm -hmm. car at quarter past six. Yeah. There's your first act of courage. Okay, do I know how to get there, then I get there. Go to the plan. To leave the conscious alone, go to the plan, drop in, act. So that, that best sort of becomes the, this is the irony, because this is how crazy it gets. So my job in sport is to try and stuff the athletes up. So I'm training them like, okay, so you chitter, chatter, chitter, chatter, and they're dropping in the bridge. Mm. It's the chitter, chatter I now influence. So I'll put an earpiece in their ear, and they'll be doing what they're doing, and I'll be saying, my grandmother can ride a bike better than you. <laughs> And they're right. So now what yeah. I'm doing is trying to imagine what the worst negative thoughts they would be having. Yeah. I get them to tell me the five inner demons. Mm. And then I'm waiting for that moment. They're doing the training. Mm. I'll whisper into the microphone, blah, 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 blah. Same with rugby. I'll be standing next to the goal kickers and my job is to try and distract them because I want them to be able to focus, drop in and just kick the ball. Yeah. So I've done some research in the background about who's texting who and what's going on in the background and what's, what's he texting his girlfriend for and whatever, you know. So yeah. I'm just like, I'm 18 and then I go, what about... What's happening with Alex? And he's like, well, I've got you. So suck them out of yeah. and back into the conscious realm. But his goal kicking is going to be best if he's in the unconscious. Yeah. So for us, if we can understand that, even as a lay person, we can leave our thinking alone. So, so what? So what is thinking shitty things about me? Yeah. What, what's yeah. your action? What's your action that you've got planned for you to go and do the thing that you said is really important to you based on who you were? Yeah. Show me the run sheet. Okay, I leave here at 5.30. I get there. It's okay. And I'm going to need to take this and this and this. Cool. There's your run sheet. Let's, Let's go. go. But we can say that to ourselves because you're having a conversation with me, but you can have the same conversation with yourself. People can, if they want to, work on the breathing because breathing is such a powerful anchor that then becomes part of the anchor into the plan. Because the breath is... Now I've got a, now I've got a pause. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. Now I've got a pause. But I don't want to breathe out. I want to now act. The breath will happen because it's what has happened, but I don't want to, now I want to pause into an action on the plan. I so you don't have to do meditation. Oh, anyway, this is my own thoughts. You don't have to become mindful of Andy, off headspace. Hours of meditation. Yeah. If you want to, if it helps, great. All I'm after is that you should leave that alone. Have your bridge, which is your plan. Now act. Mm, yeah. And you do that enough and it will become automatic. Yeah. And now we're in the unconscious realm. Because when we're acting, we're in the, you know, once we get into this, we're actually unconscious. And you're showing up. For yourself. Boom, and then you're away. That action. Totally, yeah. and then we're away. And so you see the thinking part of it. That's part A. Mm. Part B, yes, I'd like people to be more agent of the way they talk to themselves. So for me, we have this thing which is moments of eviction versus moments of shit. And moments of perfection has a language. So there's a language base that you can ask yourself because your brain is a computer. You ask it a question, it'll give you an answer. So if you ask, what's my best memory from today? Some, for example. Mm. It'll find your best memory and it will give it to you. Yeah. What are my biggest learning today? 
It'll find you your biggest lesson. What am I most proud about from today? It'll find you what you're most proud about. What did I fuck up today? <laughs> Boom, it'll find you all of those things yeah. and it will tell you where you're a piece of shit yeah. because you've asked it to find that. Yeah. So if they can understand, I can ask questions to give me a product and they can just, that'll, yeah. then they're now they're an agency with the same questions we ask our kids. Mm. If we ask them for a bed, what was your best memory? What did you learn today that's going to help you tomorrow? And what are you proud about from school today, sweetheart? Yeah. If that's your final conversation with them, we actually send them to bed with a different mindset, which then generates different REM sleep. Mm. So we can just ask those questions and we deepen it and we get more REM. So it's crazy how that then leads to a different sleep pattern. Yeah. So you can influence it by the way we think. So there's two things there is, I don't care what you think, mm. show me the action. And secondly, I do care what you think because what we think can influence our, ourselves at so many levels. Yeah. And then there's so much on the internet, they can look up optimistic language. They can look up optimism and just read about that. They can look up stoicism and look at that. Yeah. And all of that is a way of thinking. It's a perspective about the world. Stoicism is, it is what it is based on our perspective, not what actually happened. Yeah, so true. So it's we really make some, a situation totally, so much worse totally. than it was because we tell ourselves and she looked at me like this yeah and, yeah no yeah so then that becomes the key yes we do think about our thinking and we understand the power of thought and then secondly ironically when we come to act we now move to a different ball game yeah. Yeah. mondays mm. mondays seem to be the day things have to start um so let's say it's wednesday and i've decided i'm going to start on monday mm. and then i finish the cupboard that's full of chocolate mm. um, <laughs> and I quickly finished my three Netflix series by sitting on the couch <laughs> over the weekend because I've decided on Monday I'm yeah. going to start whatever yeah. that new thing is and yes. that could be positive self talking to myself that yeah. could be moving yeah. that could be eating better whatever whatever the start thing starting is pottery. starting pottery mm. I'll do it ne yeah. mm. next year. Monday I'll, next, year, next, next Monday. year so that 1st of January mm. and that Monday mm. are two mm. things that intrigue me mm. to no end and a why i guess people are thinking mm. that has to be the marker for the mm. start and mm. b how can we flip that because we often talk about there's no wagon to fall off like mm. people go oh, i fell off the wagon but next minute i'm going to get back on it mm. there's no wagon to fall off mm. and it's cool to have those those bad days yeah, totally. or those things happen like yeah. I'm the first to admit that I will scoff chocolate and I'm the first to say that I'll avoid exercise, you know. If and it's I'm, damn good doing both. You know, <laughs> and, it's, and it's fine, but it's not going, oh, well, I've failed myself or mm. I've just destroyed, all that work, I've just destroyed that in one day. Mm. So now I'm just going to wreck it with another four, mm. pick it up again on Monday. How mm. to, yeah, I'll leave that to you. But yeah, Mondays and, and the 1st of mm. January are just... Well, I guess it's, it's understanding what's actually happening. Mm. And so if we look at procrastination, which is what that is, is I'll get to that, I'll do that later, mm -hmm. Monday, that's when I'll start it. Well, there's, there's things around Mondays and years, and we'll talk about that in a second, but if we can go, okay, so what we're really talking about there, in my view, is it's like, okay, so people put shit off, and then they pick the, the start of a, a, a start of a time period, which they, oh, I'm going to do it there, because that's where their mind goes to, is when am I going to start something, I'll start something when the week starts, I'll start when the year starts. But the bit that sits underneath that with the waiting until then is the procrastination. So if we go, well, procrastination's a bad habit. We go, okay, okay, so what's the role of bad habits? Well, bad habits protect us from our deepest fears. Mm. So if you go procrastination, putting things off, well, what's the fear that sits underneath that? The fear will be a uh, fear of failure, fear of judgment, fear of rejection, fear of upsetting people, fear of looking like a dick. So they'll be the fears, which will maybe be a fear of being worthless. So there'll be layers to that as well. But you see how the procrastination actually isn't the problem. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's actually, it's been set up to protect you from that reality happening. Mm -hmm. So you then procrastinate, because if you procrastinate, you never get round to it. Um, you, you've got, you, yeah, yeah, you technically didn't fail. You've got mm -hmm. the pre-made excuse, or you don't actually ever start. Yeah. And you can get to a late age and think, why didn't I start pottery? And it's because you can go, well, because you're, you're lazy, or you never follow through, or you're all shit. So now you've got the judgment that then mm -hmm allows you just to not, it's easy to be judgmental rather than to feel like the failure, so then you can just be angry at yourself rather than feeling shitty in your stomach. So you can see how, that if we can understand what's actually playing out when we say that. Yeah. And then the second layer off that is, that procrastination habit and the fear will be holding your calibration. So everyone has a calibration, let's say zero to 100. 100 is full potential, zero is no potential. 
everyone will have an unconscious calibration set. Most of, and that's where the bell distribution curve comes in because most people's calibration is set at 50%. Mm. So they might do 75% in a maths test, but they actually think they're not very good at maths. And then guess what they'll get in the next test? They'll get 35, which now brings us back to 50 again. Yeah. And then at the end of the year, they've got a C. And they go, see, I told you, I'm just an average math student. So they go up to 80 and it makes them feel so uncomfortable because it's like, holy shit, I could actually be good at this. That rattles so much that it's so uncomfortable, then oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do any study at all. So then the procrastination will come in because they're afraid of whatever. And then also they haven't done enough prep and then they get 20. And then they get back, oh, so overall we go C. You've had a good year at maths. Yeah, I have, Dad, I go C. Oh, well, we've always been a C in this family, son, but now you've see you've got your social genetics. <laughs> oh my God. But it doesn't, but that's just maths, but that's everything. Yeah. What person do we end up marrying? What person do we end up settling with? What end up person we go into business with? All of these things will be based on our internal calibration with where we are set. Everything falls into that layer. So we have a handbrake. Let's think about it as a handbrake. That calibration has the handbrake set on it. Above it, handbrake comes on. Below it, handbrake comes off. We've got to get back to it again. Get past it, handbrake comes on, pulls us back to it again. We get under it, handbrake comes off. We get stuck into it because it's pissing us off. We back to 50 again. So it's wow. just a handbrake to keep us at that calibration. The calibration marker is set based on our fear. Our fear has then has a bad habit that's attached to it, like in this case, procrastination. Yeah. Then the procrastination bad habit has an excuse which then justifies the habit. Yeah. I just don't have time. My father was like this. My great grandfather was exactly the same. So that's all the excuse making which keeps the bad habit. We've always been drinkers, mm -hmm. right? We've always been, we're just a family of gamblers. We just love the, we just love the trots. Yeah. Same excuse which then means that justifies the bad habit which sits on top of, we'll always be struggling. Uh, right, so then it all starts to work. Yeah. So that's the bit to understand. The Monday first of the year for me is just where the brain goes when it goes, when am I going to start this? It goes, oh, actually, I'm going to go to the start of time. Yeah. That's a Monday or a first of the year or first of the month. The bit with the time frames is you can see how that's, that's the 2.2%. Mm. That's the powers. What, what the hell is 8 to 9? What the hell is Monday to Friday? What the hell is Monday to Sunday? A year of 365 days. It's something we've created into a space where if we've moved it from being daylight, you get up, dark, you go to bed. Yeah. Now the seasons are changing, you better have the firewood on because now we know it's going to be cold for four months. Mm. So we were governed by the universe before, but now we've created this thing called time, which was always there, but now we've created a space to then become an economic structure, yeah, yeah. which then also means now you can have holidays, now you can have weekend days, now you have days where you work, but now I can have more holidays than you, and oh, by the way, you're going to get 2.2% of the resources, so you're going to work six days a week, and you'll work three jobs and night shifts. And you're going to have three kids. Mm. And I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to go fishing because I'm a man and I've got a boat. So you see how <laughs> it's just a, the, the, the creation of the work week was, a, a, I reckon, a male constructed thing for us to generate the economy. That's all it is. It's a, it's a prison. Yeah. Time is a prison that power has created for us to then be mindful of versus going, there is no week. There is no year. Of course, there's a year from the beginning of time. But what's, what's, to, what's 2021 what, what, from the birth of Christ? What? Who said that is? Like, I'm not saying anything about religion, but that's a pretty big thing to say. Time starts there. Mm. Holy heck, that's arrogant. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into that debate. So we've created that time. We've created that structure. That structure's become the, the living prison that we're all trapped into. Mm. Go to Taupo on Wednesday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. How many people are on the lake? None, yeah. except probably the most wealthy. Yeah. Because yeah. they're outside, they've learned to live outside time. Yeah. Everyone else has to live inside time. Got to be work by eight thirty. Those other people go, oh, I do that. I do that at three o'clock in the morning yeah. when I'm selling shares in New York and Tokyo. It's so true. Completely different time. Yeah. But they don't talk about that. They don't say they've got a different calendar, but they bloody have. Yeah. They don't follow our calendar. They don't have January to December. They don't have that calendar. That's irrelevant to them. Mm -hmm. They're operating on trading cycles, trading times. That's open. That's closed. They don't care what day it is. So we're locked in. We're in prison. So there's two things operating there. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and again, it's because it's what we've grown up seeing totally. as well. School. So then school, Monday, school. Yeah, that's right. Friday. We see mum and dad do it. Then we jump into it because we hop on the school bus and now we go to school. The school's mm. the start of the prison. Then the work is the continuation of probation. <laughs> right. So it's all for our lives. And then at 65, they go, you're free. 
But, you've but, got you yeah. paralysis, you've got diabetes, you, you can't walk because you get broken, drought. Yeah, yeah, you've broken your body, that's so right. terribly working that's so right. hard. That's right, your lungs are about half a lung. Yeah, you go, love it. <laughs> go free. It's like, what? And you probably won't have pension in a few years' time. That's right. Good that's luck. right. And yeah. you haven't got your mortgage covered because the, you don't want to buy a house anyway, so you've been renting for 20 years. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my goodness. That's so true. Well, I think that's a beautiful place to stop there. Hmm. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am incredible. Like I said at the start, I knew this was going to be a, a stunner. <laughs> um, but I'm so grateful for your time, David. This has okay. been so cool. Yeah, it's been fun. And I think yeah, there's yeah. some serious things cool. women can take out. What's your What's your number one thing you'd like to say to them to finish off for the day? I'll sign off. That's me, Des. <laughs> um, probably this. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out that lioness girls. Totally, totally. See the fear and step yep. into it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. thanks Beautiful. very much for having me. It's been fun. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, cool.